Welcome to session two, where we're going to talk about collecting and managing data for marketing. This isn't just about gathering numbers. It's about creating a robust strategic framework that powers your entire marketing operation. Let's start with data sources. We're way beyond the basics of web analytics and CRM data. Every touch point with your customer is a potential goldmine of information. Think about the wealth of data in call center logs, chatbot transcripts, IoT device interactions, and even offline touch points like in-store purchases or event attendance. The key is to view your entire customer ecosystem as a data source. Here's the thing, more data isn't always better. It's about collecting the right data. We need to be asking what data will actually drive our business decisions. What's the cost benefit analysis of collecting and managing all of this information? It's not just about what we can collect, but what we should collect to drive real business value. So let's talk about data collection methods. We're in an era of sophisticated tracking pixels that can map a user's entire journey across digital properties. We have APIs pulling real-time data from multiple sources and advanced integrations that can combine offline and online for a truly holistic view of the customer. But the real challenge isn't just about collecting this data, which you can do with multiple systems and then making sure they're integrated. It's about making it actionable. How do we translate this diverse data streams into insights that can improve marketing ROI or customer lifetime value? That's where the magic happens. So let's get into the nitty gritty of data quality and cleansing. You know that your collection methods are gonna follow the things that are already in your MarTech stack. It's a matter of identifying, mapping the entire customer journey, and then identifying the data points that are associated with each leg of that journey. But data quality and cleansing is important. This is where the rubber meets the road. You can have all the data in the world, but if it's not accurate, consistent, and complete, it's worthless. And this is where integration gets quite complex because often the language of data that your CRM uses is different than your website, is different than your email marketing, is different than et cetera, okay? You've got all of these disparate systems that historically have been quite siloed. Most of us grew our MarTech stacks like this, right? We kind of built them over time together and they often do not communicate nicely. So this is where API tools that I mentioned earlier, like Zapier or things like that would come in handy because you have to find a way to integrate the data and to level set the data, standardize it. There has to be comparable metrics in order for you to have a holistic view of the customer journey. So I'm talking about implementing rigorous data validation processes advanced anomaly detection algorithms, machine learning models. These can identify and correct data inconsistencies at scale, which is vitally important because if you have a data problem when you're doing a little, you're gonna have a big data problem when you're doing a lot. So getting ahead of these considerations is key no matter what stage of the data marketing process you are in. This isn't just a technical issue. It's a business imperative because poor data quality leads to misguided strategies, wasted resources, and lost opportunities. We need to champion a culture of data quality throughout our organizations. That includes the processes around data storage and management. It's a whole new world. We're talking about sophisticated data warehouse handling structures. You need to have the ability to handle both structured and unstructured data to normalize that data, to cleanse that data. You may need data lakes for storing vast amounts of raw data for future analysis and cloud storage solutions offering unparalleled scalability and flexibility. This needs to be something that you take up with your leadership team because the marketing department is not the only group that needs access to this kind of data. The strategic implications of doing all this right are huge. The right data architecture can support real-time analytics, power machine learning models, enable predictive algorithms. It can dramatically increase our agility and responsiveness, enabling real-time personalization, rapid A-B testing, and dynamic pricing strategies. But it also requires significant investment and strategic thinking about the long-term value proposition of our data infrastructure. So let's tackle the elephant in the room last. We've talked a little bit about collecting data. You know those sources come from your MarTech stack. We've talked a little bit about how we clean data, manage data, that we need data infrastructure systems. But for marketers, the big issue and challenge with data is data privacy and security. 
In an era of GDPR, COPPA, and increasing consumer awareness, how we handle data can make or break our brand. We're not just talking about compliance, we're talking about trust. So this goes beyond basic encryption and access controls. We're looking at advanced anonymization techniques and talking about UECOM. We're talking about privacy preserving machine learning methods like federated learning and blockchain for data integrity. But more than that, we need to be thinking about how we can turn our data practices into a competitive advantage. How can we use transparency about our data practices to build trust with our customers, to make good on the promise that we will keep them safe, even as we try in increasingly sophisticated ways to reach more of them? When it comes to specific tools and technologies, the landscape is constantly evolving. So we've seen tools like Google Analytics offer advanced machine learning capabilities, platforms like Segment unify data from multiple sources. For data management, cloud solutions like Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery are revolutionizing how we store and process data. But here's the critical point. The specific tools aren't as important as the overall data strategy. How do these tools fit into our broader marketing ecosystem? How do they enable our marketing objectives? How can we translate complex data architectures into tangible business benefits? As we wrap up, I want to emphasize that collecting and managing data isn't just a technical challenge. It is a strategic imperative. In today's data-driven marketing landscape, our data capabilities are a key differentiator. We need to be championing a data-first culture throughout our organizations. We need to be thinking about data, not just as a way to measure marketing performance, but as a core asset that can drive business strategy. Remember, the goal isn't just to have more data, it's to have better data and to use that data more effectively. It's about turning data into insights and insights into action. In our next session, we'll dive into how to analyze data and turn it into actionable marketing strategies. But for now, start thinking about your current data practices. Where are the gaps in your data collection? How could you improve your data quality? What untapped data sources could produce new insights? The organizations that will thrive in the future of marketing are those that can effectively collect, manage, and leverage data. So let's make sure we're at the forefront of this data revolution. I covered a lot of ground here. What I want you to do now is head to the micro sessions because that's where we're going to get practical. In micro session one, I'm going to show you how to use Google Looker Studio to set up custom SEO dashboards. In micro session two, we're going to look at a mature closed loop report chock full of data. In micro session three, I'm going to show you how to map your own data ecosystem that can then be set up on any platform you use.